One of the big challenges of, of being an indie was trying to get you know the cast and and uh, you know their agents and managers and everything on board because without the backing of a big studio, a lot of times you you go to these people and then they get hit with ten thousand kind of BS uh, offers every day. So trying to cut through and, and show that you're the real deal is, is definitely one of the challenges. And the movie will actually be finished. I mean, I know there's been a lot of movies that start and then they stop halfway through production or because they run out of money. I mean, there's always it's always a gamble sometimes when you, you, know, you don't have the deep pockets of a studio protecting the movie. I think the main advantage of having such a, a small core group, um, you know, being the, the multi-headed dragon on Skyline was that, you know, we've got such a long working relationship with these guys. Uh, Brutally honest. Yeah, but I mean, the reason we work with Liam and, and Josh Cordes um, is because we all have similar tastes. We, we all have a similar language and we, lo we like the same kind of movies. So that's, you know, that, that kind of um, glue that, that keeps us together that doesn't always occur in a, a lot of places you're you know if you're in a studio you're answering to people that sometimes are from different generations you know we're children of the Spielberg and Lucas generation you know that's the movies we watch growing up in general in old projects where you know you get moments where everyone gets very passionate about an idea, you know, and sometimes you got to talk someone off the ledge a little bit. You know, there's always, but that, I mean, that happens on all movies. But I guess the advantage with this is that even if we have a creative difference with each other, which you know, during the scripting process, because it was very accelerated, there was, you know, some things went together really well. Some things took a little bit of battling to kind of get hammered out. But the good news is we always came up with a better solution out of that. And I think that was good that we were all able to push each other really hard because sometimes if you don't know people, you, you know, you don't know how far you can push someone before, you know, you get, it turns yeah. into fisticuffs. I, I, I think one of the most important things that was different on the development part of, of Skyline was that, you know, Colin and I are, are big believers in, in Josh and, and Liam O'Donnell. And, you know, it's like when, when the going got rough on certain things, we stuck with those guys. We stayed and stood behind them and, you know, just gave them time to to do the notes whereas a lot of times what you see in the in development process is never the you, same writer you get a you get a draft and if people don't really they're like eh, you know we don't really like it but fire the writer hire someone else <laughs> first thing you do is fire the writer and bring a new guy in and he has to start from scratch and then he pollutes the process with some outside ideas that uh, maybe at the the first time everyone heard him they're like that's really smart but you know that can happen four or five times and that just uh, basically leads to the watering down so we, we fought against that very hard on this and, and stuck with those guys. And I think that that, you know, in the end, um, it was for the benefit of everybody. I, I think at this point now, you know, Colin and I have been co-directing long enough that together that, you know, we, we finish each other's sentences. Um, I, you know, I think we both feel very confident that if one of us were to, to uh, let the other one take a lead with something, that we would get a result that we were happy with. So, uh, not to say that that's a hundred uh, percent hit rate. Sometimes I walk away and come back and go, "What the hell were you thinking?" But you know that uh, there's a nice checks and balances system between us, and we have even more of that, you know, the great dialogue between ourselves than we do with Josh and Liam. I mean, the story was the most exciting thing. I mean, because we do visual effects on all the biggest movies and that anyway. So, you know, the ability to do our own thing, create our own mythos and storyline, and then actually have characters that you really care for and want to follow into, you know, the next movies, that was actually the, the funnest thing. I mean, we blow shit up all the time, and that's, you know what I mean? That we, we get, we'll get enjoyment out of that regardless, whether it's our own movie or for Cameron or for Fincher or someone. But being able to actually get a story and then actually try to build something that's actually a franchise, something that we own and it's kind of our baby, that really was the most inspiring part of the project.
we kind of drew from Greek mythology that you know they had the sirens that would sing and lure the sailors to crash their boats into the rocks. And Colin and I were you know were spitballing ideas and we're thinking like, wouldn't that be cool to take that and have aliens that had something that bright and with a pulsating light that was beautiful and beautiful alluring. Evil. Yeah, and it was the beauty and the alluring uh, that made it seductive and, and preyed upon that human instinct um, of being attracted to it to then suck, you know, to get us out of our houses, out of our structures, into the open where we're vulnerable before abducting us. And we, we just really, you know, we were really intrigued by that idea. And then Liam and Josh kind of built the, the script and the story around that premise. And it just seemed much fresher than laser beams and, you know, like, just, just th that whole thing of just of you know it's always like in Independence Day or other movies you know which are really cool but that that's always there's a militaristic sort of element to it and we just wanted to think like well if these things came down and they're all all organic you know they're they're not made in a factory these are actual like organisms parasites there's a whole different you know mentality and motive to these things like if they were able to conquer us based off of uh, such with a, no a, weapons no with no weapons and based off just like a, a an instinctual weakness you know it's kind of like that curiosity killed the cat you know it's like humans have to look there's a if there's like a car crash on a freeway every single person looks no one cannot look at that and that was kind of the idea and that's kind of where the tagline came from but don't look up because as soon as you say that your brain instantly you know, like, you, you, you screw up. You do it in just even thinking about the tagline of the movie is. And that is that was kind of the, the, the beauty, and it was just a simplicity. 